Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about an upcoming big cooldown. It's already partially underway. It's going to spread a little bit further eastward. We're going to talk about all of that throughout this video. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now, I'd also ask that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and the pinned comment down below. Now, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, what is your weirdest weather story? Let me know in the comments down below the most odd weather you've ever experienced, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. All right, now let's get into this video, and first things first, we're taking a look back in the past at September 6th, because I want to show you the pattern we were in just a few days ago. As you can see, for most of the western half of the United States, we were dealing with far above normal temperatures, and as well as for the east coast, we were dealing with below normal temperatures for most of the eastern third of the United States there. All right, now let's go ahead and move it towards September 8th, which is yesterday, and as you can see, big changes did occur. If you live in these regions, you know we really, really saw a massive cooldown, and this is the biggest cooldown that I'm going to show in this video. We're going to watch it progress throughout the rest of this video, and as you can see, for the Great Plains, the Rockies, portions of the Pacific Northwest there, portions of the Great Lakes, portions of the Ohio Valley there as well, all dealing with this massive cooldown with up to 30 degrees or more below average temperatures. All right, now here's what the actual temperatures looked like. Keep in mind this was at the afternoon hours of September 8th. 40s widespread, even some 30s scattered in there. Uh, very, very cold conditions. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on towards this afternoon in just a moment. All right, now here we are taking a look at this afternoon, September 9th, Wednesday, and as you can see, it is still just as potent as it was on the 8th, except it is much further south. Again, just taking a look at those pinks and, and some of the purples in there, that is very far below normal temperatures for most of the plains, the Great Lakes, uh, and the Four Corner States as well. Very, very frigid conditions. Here's the actual temperatures on this afternoon as well. Again, same story. 40s are widespread there throughout many states throughout the plains, the upper Midwest, uh, even the Great Lakes dealing with some mid-50s, so really, really cold compared to normal. And the east is, is very warm compared to normal, as you can see. Uh, 90s, 80s, pretty widespread, so that's not going to last very long. I'm just going to put that out there. Here's September 10th, by the way, uh, and you can see it's become a tiny bit less potent, but still just extremely cold compared to normal. Uh, especially those pinks once again. You can see they're spreading more throughout the Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley there, but still mostly just for the South Central United States. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to move towards September 11th, then 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, and just keep moving on in that fashion. All right, now here we are taking a look at the afternoon hours on Friday, September 11th. And as you can see, that cooldown has become a little less potent there throughout the Great Plains, uh, the Rockies. There is still some purples, uh, and you can see those deeper blues are spreading throughout much more of the Ohio Valley, where it's still far below normal temperatures. It's just in comparison to those purples, not looking as much. Uh, but really, those areas are going to deal with some very far below normal temperatures as well. Uh, so basically the plain south central four corner states, Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes mostly. And then the east is looking more average uh, at this point. Let's take it to about Saturday, September 12th here. As you can see, uh, again, that cooldown is really breaking up, but we can still see some of those purples for the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, even the mid-Atlantic dealing with some of that. That southeast ridge, though, you see those oranges and reds there for the southeast, that is really holding on, and that's going to really impact the pattern moving forward. I mentioned in my September forecast and some other videos where I was talking about September, that could be a pretty big factor moving forward. It looks like that southeast ridge is going to really want to play a, play a role, in, even in through the winter as well. We're going to need to watch it closely because... In the long range, the models haven't been picking up on it being too much of a factor, but then once we get closer to the given day, it really picks more up on that southeast ridge. That's a sign that the models don't have a good handle on it. Um, and I, I really think that the southeast ridge is going to be a bigger factor than the models or even a lot of forecasters are thinking at this point moving forward. 
All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on, and we're going to move on towards September 13th, 14th, 15th. We're going to start to see that cooldown spread further east, and then we're going to see another one start to build in eventually after the 15th. All right, now here we are taking a look at September 13th, like I said before. This is going to be a Sunday, by the way. Uh, it looks quite pleasant for a lot of the eastern United States. The only area that's really too far away from normal is actually up there in the Pacific Northwest where you might be dealing with some uh, well above normal temperatures. Uh, but for a lot of the eastern United States, the central United States as well, uh, we're going to be dealing with a lot of those slightly below normal temperatures. Again, it's going to feel quite pleasant uh, to say the least. That southeast ridge still a factor by Sunday. Uh, but I really think we're going to be dealing with some lower 80s through a lot of the eastern United States, maybe even upper 70s up there for New England, maybe lower 70s uh, as well, lower humidity probably. Going to be quite pleasant to end the weekend there. Let's move it towards Monday, September 14th, and as you can see, uh, we start to see cooler than normal conditions for the eastern United States, so those cooler temperatures really build in. Those warmer than normal temperatures that were up there for the Pacific Northwest move further east into a lot of the Rockies and the upper Midwest there, uh, where we were dealing with the very far below normal temperatures. We've now moved into the other side of the spectrum. Let's take it to about Tuesday, September 15th. Again, all of these frames have been the afternoon, by the way, about 2 p.m., uh, and we're seeing that cooldown really build in for the eastern United States. We're now we're dealing with some moderately below average temperatures, some 4 to even 10 degrees below average Celsius. Uh, the mid-Atlantic probably going to be in the 70s there. We're going to start to get a, a fall-like temperature, it seems like, here moving forward within the next 10 days. Uh, so it's going to get a lot more pleasant than it is, you know, for the coming days. You know, the, the further into the the forecast here we're getting the better and better things are looking obviously the average temperature is probably going down by a degree every two days or so um so keep that in mind as well as you're as you're taking a look at each frame now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at september 16th which is going to be a wednesday and then we're going to take a look at the 18th and then we're going to take a look at it in weekly increments actually as well All right, so here's by September 16th, and as you can see, what's gone ahead and happened is we've seen this little bit of a cooldown enter uh, the Pacific Northwest and then through some of the similar regions where we saw in the beginning of the model run uh, some of that cooldown. We still see that southeast cooldown. It's finally made its way down there and beat out the southeast ridge. I think that ridge is going to put up a bit of a fight back and forth, and if you do see a cooldown, I think it'll be short-lived, and then you'll see a warm-up after. It's a very, very typical when you're in this type of pattern to see it flip flop back and forth. All right. Now what we're taking a look at also is uh, some of the upper Midwest, like North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota, we're seeing another cooldown move in. So keep that in mind as we move forward. So let's take it to Friday, September 18th. Keep in mind also, this is very far into the model run. So, you know, the reliability here starts to go down a little bit. However, you can see that it is calling for another cooldown, and the significance here isn't that you should expect a cooldown on September 18th. The likelihood of this being exactly correct is um, not the best, but the important thing here is that it shows more cooldowns after our big one. So we've seen multiple come through, uh, and that's the significance. It might happen on the 16th or the 19th, but all I know is the model is calling for frequent cooldowns. That's what you can take away, and that's what you can expect to be relatively accurate. All right, but the East Coast, we see a bit of a warm up ahead of this cool, ahead of this cooldown. Again, something that is very typical in this type of a pattern. That Southeast Ridge kind of building back in way far north. Also, the West, we were dealing with that cooldown, but you've begun to warm up as well. I call this a horseshoe pattern. We see the warm on both sides and underneath, and then the cooldown there in the middle. Uh, and it, again, that's a pretty classic pattern, if you ask me. Let's go ahead and take a look at it on weekly. Uh, weekly increments here and this is from our CFS model a pretty good uh, weekly model here uh, so this is September 8th through the 15th and as you can see again a little bit of that horseshoe pattern is what we're expecting warm in the east warm in the west cold in between there uh, but as we move towards the 15th through the 22nd so we're getting pretty far into it again the accuracy here uh, is going to be a little bit lower and an indication that this model isn't too confident is when we see the lighter shades for instance, up there in the Pacific Northwest, it has very dark shades of reds. That tells me it's very confident that we're going to have those above normal conditions there. Uh, but the, the 
in the east it's either calling for average conditions or it just doesn't know which one it's going to be i would guess a little bit of some cooler than normal conditions based on the fact that we have those much warmer than normal conditions there out west and then as we move towards the 22nd through the 29th as you can see it's a lot of the same so it has has us kind of locked into this pattern there for the final half of september we'll have to see how accurate that ends up being all right now for today's comment of the day i asked you guys what's going to happen with those two other disturbances we have in the atlantic that aren't um are two tropical storms obviously and zeta derv who i pick for comment of the day very frequently said the one off the african coast looks like it will become a tropical storm or hurricane the tropics are ripe at this time for development and i have to agree i think that african disturbance really needs to be watched closely and it might have the highest potential out of any of the systems currently in the atlantic which is very very interesting there's also one behind it as well that we will eventually have to talk about as well Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, uh, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our diamond patrons, Madbirds, Dan Hazard, Mark J, and Alicia Davis, alongside our platinum patron, Donna Carnes. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.